In the following practice questions, a uh, question you are being asked to find the lattice enthalpy of PVCl2 lead chloride uh, and uh, you are going to use the born neighbor cycle to find the lattice enthalpy. What is given is the electron affinity of chlorine which is minus 349 kilojoules per mole enthalpy change of atomization of lead is also known and enthalpy change of formation of PVCl2 is also given. So the way I start, I start off with the enthalpy of formation of PVCl2 which is that one mole of lead chloride PBCL2 which is a solid and it's PBCL2 PB is 2 plus uh, is formed from its constituent elements which in this case are lead and lead is going to be in solid state and the other element is chlorine chlorine is a diatomic molecule at room uh, at standard uh, conditions so it's going to be Cl2 and it would be it would be in gaseous state so this uh, equation, uh, the enthalpy change of this equation represents the enthalpy change of formation of PbCl2. So this, this is the first part. This is our first path. And we're going to apply Hess law and construct a born able cycle. We're going to figure out another path of uh, going from reactants all the way to this product, which is PbCl2. So the first thing we need to do is uh, that we need to, lead is solid. So we need to atomize lead, we need uh, gaseous lead atoms, we're going to keep uh, chlorine, Cl2 gas as it is. So, so in this uh, reaction, this tiny arrow, nothing is happening to chlorine, but lead uh, which was solid metallic lead where all the lead atoms were metallically bonded to each other, uh, their bonds are broken and gaseous lead atoms, one mole of gaseous lead atoms are formed. So this is, this is your enthalpy of atomization of lead so enthalpy change of atomization of lead in the next uh, stage you have chlorine in gaseous state uh, in Cl2 Cl is forming a single bond so Cl Cl bond needs to be broken so I can get chlorine gaseous atom so nothing happens to lead lead is as it is gaseous I'm not doing anything with that but I'm breaking the Cl2 bonds and if I break that, I get two Cl gaseous atoms. So over here, what I'm doing is I'm breaking Cl-Cl bond. So this step would be equivalent to the bond energy of a Cl-Cl bond. So uh, we finally got atoms. We have lead atoms and we have chlorine atoms. And I need to ionize them now because lead is 2 plus over here and Cl is minus 1. So I, knew, I need to ma make lead 2 plus and Cl minus 1. So the next arrow is going to, it's going to go from uh, here. So this is my next arrow. Uh, lead gaseous atoms, they lose two electrons and they're going to form Pb2 plus. So two plus ions are formed and lead ends up losing two electrons. Uh, chlorine is as it is, nothing is happening to the two chlorine gaseous atoms. So this step, lead gaseous atoms get converted to lead two plus, they lose two electrons, is equivalent to the first and the second ionization energy. So it's equivalent to the first and second ionization energy of lead of PB and this uh, value could be found from the data booklet uh, remember uh, you need to add the two values because the first ionization energy is when uh, an atom a gaseous atom loses one electron and the second ionization energy is when after losing that one electron loses another electron so since we need to lose it needs to lose two electrons so we need to to add the two values up uh, the next step is going to be now lead has lost two electrons so you have chlorine over here and it's going to end up gaining those uh, electrons to form Cl-1 so the next step is that lead is as it is nothing happens to lead it's still in gaseous it's a gaseous 2 plus ion and on the other hand you have two Cl-1 gaseous ions so each of the chlorines so one chlorine gains one electron, the other chlorine gains another electron. So each of the chlorines, they end up gaining one electron, so Cl minus one. So this is equal to the electron affinity of uh, Cl atoms, but it's going to be multiplied by two because you have two Cl atoms. 
and now we reach our last step to complete the bond able cycle this is our very last step and that step is this is called the lattice enthalpy so this last step is when gaseous ions uh, they combine to form one mole of solid ionic lattice so this is the last step lattice enthalpy and this is the value that needs to be found in the question because this is the only value that is not uh, provided so i'm going to start filling the values in the born able cycle so the first for example this one over here electron affinity is provided it's minus 349 multiplied by 2 so uh, this is basically equal to minus 349 multiplied by 2 then you're also given the enthalpy change of atomization of lead which was somewhere over here at the top this is given as uh, 195 kilojoules per mole and you have you were given the enthalpy of formation which was minus 395 so this over here is minus 395 kilojoules per mole the information that's uh, missing is for example the bond energy of CLCL is not given it would be given in the data booklet so you need to look up the look look up this value in the data booklet so the CLCL bond energy in the data booklet is given as uh, uh, this would be equal to 242 kilojoules per mole uh, then you also need uh, the first and second ionization energy of lead uh, is needed to solve this question and this would also be given in the data booklet so let's find that out as well and the values uh, that are given are 716 so that's the first ionization energy of lead and uh, the second one is 1450 kilojoules per mole so these are the two values so i've uh, i now have all the values in this Hess cycle or born able cycle and i need to find lattice enthalpy so Hess law states that one path the energy changes of one path are the same uh, as the energy changes of the second path which is this one over here so in a reaction no matter which path is taken the energy changes are going to be exactly the same so enthalpy of formation this one over here is equal to all you sum up all the values over here so they would be e equal so enthalpy of formation is minus 395 and that would be equal to the enthalpy of atomization uh, 242 716 1450 plus minus 349 into 2 and the lattice enthalpy so i'm going to do all this uh, so it's 195 and then you have 242 then you have 716, 1450. And finally you have minus 349 into 2. And then the lattice enthalpy of lead chloride. So I'm going to solve this now. I'm going to solve it and I'm going to make uh, lattice enthalpy the subject of the equation. So using my calculator now to uh, solve for lattice enthalpy. And the value on my calculator for lattice enthalpy comes out to be around minus, it's uh, coming out to be minus 2300 kilojoules per mole. So that's the value of lattice enthalpy. And uh, always make sure that you get the signs correct. A lot of people, a lot of students make a lot of mistakes when they are doing this calculation, which is pretty straightforward, but they get the signs wrong and they get the eventual, the final answer incorrect as well. So always recheck your calculations. And always remember lattice enthalpy would always be in the range of uh, somewhere around minus 1000 to minus 4000. So, so uh, it, it is going to be exothermic. So the answer, one way to check whether the answer is correct is it's always going to be exothermic. The other way is that the value must be around uh, somewhere between, between 1000 and 4000. Depending on how strong the lattice is. The stronger the lattice, you can check the strength of the lattice as well. Lead is 2 plus so... So the lattice formed is probably going to be very strong. So, so lattice enthalpy or the energy release when forming that lattice is also going to be greater. So minus 2300 is, uh, is, is, is correct. It looks correct. So that's your final answer.